When I was at the Mid-Ohio Valley Pin Turners gathering this year, Brian Wrights gave me this gorgeous watch parts blank that he made. Check this thing out. It is absolutely incredible. It's got a burl at the top. I think that's a maple burl. I'm not 100% sure. Here's the lower half of the blank. And the tubes that he used to make this are for a junior gentleman. And you can see I have a, a junior gentleman rollerball pin kit in gold so that it matches the watch parts. And my plan is, I don't know how much you know about a drum corps called the Cavaliers, but my son is in the Cavaliers and the Cavaliers have a gear. When you, when you become a full member, you get a gear. And then for each year that you are in the Cavaliers, you earn a gear uh, and you have a necklace that you wear and all of those gears are on it. And my son has his first two gears for being accepted and for being a year one. And he absolutely loves the Cavaliers. He'll be going back and trying out in December and hopefully he'll be uh, participating again this summer as a Cavalier for the 75th anniversary. And what my plan is, is I wanna make this pin and I want to present it to my son uh, when he gets accepted into the Cavaliers for their 75th season. Since these already have the tubes in them, the first thing we're gonna do is go to the bandsaw and I'm gonna cut away a little bit of this excess resin and then we'll take it to the disc sander and we'll square the blanks up. After that, they'll be ready to go straight to the lathe. I'm all set up and ready to begin turning this blank. Initially, I thought I would just put these on a mandrel and turn the top and the bottom section at the same time, but I decided that I really, I really just want to take my time and enjoy the turn. It's not about getting it done quickly. It's about getting it done as, as nicely as I can because I really want this pin to stand out. So we're going to go between centers. just finished turning the cap for my pin. I'm happy with how it looks. I had a little bit of a, a rise in the middle and I kept slowly trying to work that off because you know you want a little bit of shape but I didn't want a hump there. It, it needs to it needs to really flow and uh, I, I was super careful with that because you don't want to like dip it in you know gouge into the pin while you're doing that uh, so you're taking these super light cuts. I can feel just not even a paper thickness on each end transition between the bushing and the blank. I am not worried about that because we are about to uh, go after this with some uh, 150 grit sandpaper and I'll clean that little lip up. I just did not want to get below the bushing. I want this pin to be everything that it possibly, or this blank to be everything that it possibly can be when I made it to my pin kit. You've seen me use this with a hundred other pins, but I maintain this is the best way to get a nice flat surface from end to end on your blank. We're just going to go ahead and sand with this blank and we're going to look for shiny spots. We're going to continue to sand until the entire blank is hazy. And then once it is, we'll come back and sand from end to end to get the deep centrifugal scratches out. And we'll just move on to the other grits of paper. I just finished sanding my blank. I sanded all the way down to 600 grit. I removed every centrifugal scratch that I could find. There are a few end-to-end -end scratches, but we're gonna take care of those here in just a minute. When you have a hybrid blank, you have a dilemma. What do you do? Well, normally if I had a straight wood blank, I'd go ahead at this point, apply CA, and then I'd micro mesh the CA to get rid of all of the ripples in it. We actually have an acrylic blank. We don't want to put CA 
over our acrylic until we remove the scratches. The way I would normally remove scratches from an acrylic blank is I would use micro mesh wet and I would sand that acrylic blank to get rid of the scratches, the fine scratches. We don't want to do that because we've got wood at this end and we don't want to get our wood wet. A couple of reasons. Wood can kind of swell, which will change its shape. Uh, wood can get a little bit rough when you get water on it. It'll, it'll raise the grain. Or the last piece is when we put water on wood, we cannot finish it with CA glue until it's completely dry. So what do we do? Well, there's a couple of options. For this particular instance, I'm going to go ahead and use something called Zona paper. Okay, It's a paper that is similar to micro mesh, but we can sand dry with it. Now, don't worry. If you don't have Zona and you have micro mesh, use your micro mesh pads dry. Sand your blank dry. Remove all of the scratches that you can see in the acrylic blank. At that point, you're going to have a super smooth surface. And the acrylic blank, quite honestly, would be ready for just some uh, wax and a good buffing. We're going to go ahead because we have wood and we are going to finish this with CA. I never finish acrylic with CA unless it is a hybrid blank, simply because it doesn't need it, number one. Uh, and, and number two, why add the extra step? But in this case, we have no choice. We've got to finish the wood. So we're going to do the entire blank in CA. And then we'll come back after we've CA'd the blank. We'll wet sand it with micro mesh, get rid of all of the ripples in the CA then we'll be ready for wax. I'm running at about 840 RPMs and I'm just going to use the Zona paper from end to end. I'm not going to I'm not going to stop the lathe and sand back and forth. We're just trying to buff out all of the straight scratches, the end-to-end -end scratches on the blank. I get this Zona paper from Turner's Warehouse. Um, I'll make sure there's a link in the description of this video. I finished sanding with the Zona paper. And it looks like, as I watch the reflection, I'm not seeing any scratches. I've got a super nice transition in my bushing, so I'm glad that I didn't try to do that with the tool. I'm glad I went ahead and um, let the sandpaper just clean that, that up so it's going to fit really nice uh, against the components. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, blank um, on my uh, nonstick bushings, and we're going to apply some CA to really just seal this blank. Got the blank mounted between my nonstick bushings. I am going to go ahead and use denatured alcohol to clean the blank. And I just want to get any dust out of the wood. I'm not too worried about dust on the uh, surface of the other blank because that'll come right off. But what I want to do is make sure there are no oily fingerprints on there. I mean, I touched this with my hand as I moved it from the turning bushings to the nonstick bushings. And I don't want any oils in there that could react with the CA and uh, cause the... Uh, the finish to haze. So we got her good and clean. Looks really nice. I'm going to let it just spin here for a few minutes and make sure that um, all of the denatured alcohol evaporates. Then we'll come back and apply our CA finish. Take a look at that. I just put my first coat of thin CA on the blank and look at how clear it is. Those numbers are just, it looks like glass. I am super excited with how this looks. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut the camera off and I'm going to apply three to four more coats of, of thin and then four or five coats of medium and I'll come back and show you this blank right before I micro mesh it. Take a look at that blank. I'm done putting my CA finish on there. This blank looks incredible. I'm super excited about it. I need to get the uh, nonstick bushings off, go ahead and square up the ends and uh, this will be ready to uh, polish. So let's let's get that done. got my blank back on the turning bushings and I put a pretty thick coat of CA on here so I can feel just barely a lip there but a pretty decent size about twice the height of that lip on this end so we're going to go ahead and micro mesh this blank paying special attention to each of the ends so that we can uh, get this back down to the proper diameter. I'm working the ends really hard first and then I'll go ahead and work through the middle. I don't want to get too crazy with the first couple of pads. 
just finished with the micro mesh. The blank looks phenomenal. It feels like a sheet of glass. I'm gonna go ahead now and put some Renaissance wax on here and we're gonna prepare to buff this blank. I've got the lower blank on the lathe. We're gonna follow the same exact process. I don't know how much of this one I'll show, but uh, we're just gonna do the exact same thing we did for the top, uh, for the cap of the pin and just turn this down. Let me get my turning bushings out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and first assemble the cap into the back half of the pin. Let me get this turned around. I wanna make sure that the, the clip is perfectly centered on the back side of the, uh, of the clock. I'm just gonna get it started just a little bit. And it looks like we're gonna to have to tighten that up some too. And now that it's started, I'm gonna take a look at my clip and I'll be able to move the clip around. We're gonna be very careful with this. We'll press it in just a little more and I'm gonna test that clip because I want that clip to be perfectly centered before I put the final crimp on the pin. So I'm just looking down the pin like this. I can see the clock and I'm centering the clip on the back side of the pin cap. That looks pretty darn good. Now we'll give it the final press and lock everything into place. There we go. Get that bushing off of there. And that is directly behind it. If you look down at the, at the watch face, there's your clip on the back. Now we've got the lower half of the cap that we need to press in. Just gonna take our time. Let me get the back half of this so you can watch. Just gonna take our time and slowly press this in. No sense getting in a hurry. It's keeping an eye on the blank as we do this. All right, now take a look at that. I told you it was a well-appointed kit. This is a beautiful kit and it goes really well with this watch park blank. Set that cap out of the way. Now we wanna go ahead and do some assembly on the um, lower half of the pin. I'm gonna put the cap in first. Okay, once again, let me grab it from the back. There we go. Caps in place. That's beautiful. Take a look at that, that's gorgeous. Got a really nice fit. Let's go ahead now and we'll assemble the front half of the pin. Now the way this works is this has this little collar on it. The collar needs to lay against the pin and then this presses in like this. The threads go on the outside so the cap can screw onto the threads. Then there are threads on the inside for the nib to thread into. So let's go ahead and get this pressed into place. Let me flip it around like this. Okay, and just nice and easy, press it in until, there we go, it stops. Okay, this kit actually came with a standard nib for a rollerball refill, or it also came with a, a number five uh, nib uh, that I can turn, put, turn this into a fountain pen. Uh, I don't see my son using fountain pens this stage of his life. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the roller ball in, but we'll hang on to the um, fountain pen refill just in case he wants to do that at some point. And there is a spring. The spring was already inside of the cap, so I didn't bother taking it out. I just left it in there, but uh, that's, so that was just ready to go. Didn't have to worry about that too much. We'll put the front nib into the pin. We'll tighten it down. Now, when I assemble the pin, I think this is a gorgeous pin, and uh, my son is gonna love it. Once again, this is the Junior Monarch Pin Kit. It comes from Classic Nib, and it is a stunning kit. I don't care what you, what you think, it, th this kit is amazing, and this pin is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you for joining me in the shop today, and I would like to throw out a huge thank you to Brian Wrights for this gorgeous, watch parts pin blank. It is absolutely stunning. And it is really set off by this Junior Monarch pin kit. Absolutely gorgeous. It is gunmetal with gold accents. Take a look at how well appointed it is. It is, it, it's a great kit, a lot of weight to it. Feels good in the hand. I've got the roller ball section on the end of it. Uh, this kit actually comes with a number five fountain pen nib. You can unthread this, 
pop a number five fountain pen and this instantly becomes a fountain pen. Um, I thought about making a fountain pen out of it, but I really don't think my son will, will use a fountain pen at this point in his, uh, in his career. I think uh, with college, et cetera, he'll probably just uh, prefer the rollerball. Thank you, Brian. Classic Nib, if you wanna get one of these kits, check them out. Uh, they are incredible. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.